Hello everyone, my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Engineering and Remote Sensing Lab. Welcome back to our next tutorial in this introduction to remote sensing of the environment. In today's lab, we're going to be working with terrestrial laser scanning data in the Cloud Compare software suite. Now, in order to complete this lab, you're going to have to install Cloud Compare, provided the link here. And one of the really great things about Cloud Compare is that it is an open source project and it's available across platforms. So whether you're a Windows, Mac or Linux user, if you head over to the download tab here, you can find the latest version that suits your operating system. Now, last week, um, or a couple of weeks ago on campus, with the students in my class, we used the little Leica BLK360, which is an entry-level um, terrestrial laser scanner. It's one of the smallest and lightest time of flight sensors. It's actually a great little package. It has a outdoors a range of about 40 meters. It, the wavelength is 950 nanometers. And all in all, it's a nice entry level system. It is designed more for indoor use. It lacks a GPS and um, IMU is not set up for for multiple outdoor scans, but it, it can perform very nicely if you use it um, in a very stepwise and methodical manner. Now for our class, we decided to scan the BOAB court on Charles Darwin University campus. The BOAB court is just a section of campus where there are a number of, of BOAB trees planted. And we're going to be working with three scans in this set of tutorials. I provided links to them here. You can download the scans in LAS format. Uh, just note before downloading that each file is one gig in size. Okay, now getting to know Cloud Compare. The first thing we need to do is launch a Cloud Compare application. You can access that either depending on your operating system from your applications folder or usually just by searching for Cloud Compare and launching it. So once you launch Cloud Compare, you will see a screen like this where you have the large view window that dominates the application. You have a number of tools along the top here and down the sides, and most of them you can access from the menus up in the top as well. Now the first thing we're going to do is open up one of our files. So to do that, you can either use this icon over here or go File, Open, and navigate to where you downloaded those uh, files that I, I provided the links for. And we're going to open up BOAB 1 to start with. Just a note, by default, you might have this set to Cloud Compare Entities. You might not be able to select the LAS file. You can either specify that you're interested in LAS files or just easiest is to choose the All option. And that'll show you all the available files in your folder. So click on boab1.las, las being the industry standard format for LiDAR data. Now, when you first open up a LAS file, you'll see this dialog window pop up. Um, it's asking a number of details about which fields to preserve from the LAS file. For the purposes of today, just click apply or apply all. And secondly, it's going to ask you about transforming the coordinates from their original system into a local coordinate system. Again, you can just say yes or yes to all. Now you'll see this file loading up and you can see how many points are in this file. So 28 million in this case. So the little Leica is quite high on detail. And when that launches, we'll be greeted with this um, view in the view window. So what this is, is we're looking down onto the LiDAR data from a bird's eye view. If we head over back to our tutorial, just to keep, 
keep pace with the tutorial. We're now on to um, point number seven. And you'll see here that I'm discussing just a few features of the software itself, showing you where your file is located in the file structure, where it is in the view, and some properties about that file. So if we head over here, you'll see that our point cloud is housed within a folder. If we click on the point cloud itself, this yellow box, bounding box, will appear, and you'll see a whole lot of information come up in the properties tab telling us more about that file. Okay, um, point number eight. Let's zoom in a bit closer to see more detail. Now, in order to zoom in, we're going to use the scroll wheel on the mouse or on the trackpad. There would be two fingers up and down. If you're using a mouse, just use the scroll wheel. And here you can pull the image closer to you or push it away from you. As we come in, closer you can see where we took the scan from this little black circle here is a circle of occlusion underneath the scanner this is the one tiny area that the scanner can't see the Leica BLK 360 is largely a, a 360 degree scanner there's just a tiny little area underneath the scanner that it, it can't see so with the scroll wheel we can move um, forward and backward, that's the zoom. Um, the right click, if you right click, you'll see the crosshairs appear. That's for translation. So we can move the um, image up and down, left and right. Okay. And the great thing about this is that it's 3D data, and that's what the left click is for. Give a left click, and we can start rotating the image on, on, a, on different axes. And here we get that 3D view of the area. I can zoom in a bit closer, move this around. Um, if I come in over here, so we can see a bit of green lawn here, some of the boabs. You can see the steps of the auditorium with some students on the steps. Okay, so now we're up to um, Step 10, step 11, the 3D navigation does take a while to get used to. So you need to play around a bit to get the hang of it. Try and navigate the view shown below and see if you can see those students on the steps of the auditorium. Um, every now and then, as you're moving around, you might find you get lost, you get, you turn the image some strange angle and you can't find you can't orientate yourself just head over back to this one-to-one -one button here that will bring you back to the one-to-one -to, -one, to the to the full extent and then you can use these little cubes here these provide you the the view angles so this sets the top view this one would be a side on view there would be the other side view from the back view from the bottom and in general, if you're lost in the scene, head over here to the top view, click one to one, and you'll be back where you started. Now, um, so far we've been visualizing the terrestrial laser scanning or TLS data in RGB because the BLK360 has in integ integrated true color cameras in it, so it's also recording. Um, red, green, and blue information. And what it's done on board is assigned the RGB values to the first return of each laser pulse. And to a large extent, this works very nicely. We can see these white shade cloths, can see the green grass, can see the brown stems of the boab trees. One place where it doesn't work quite so well you'll see this blue, bluish tinge to the boab branches. And um, these aren't actually blue, they are brown. But what's happened here is if I just come back to this first image where you can see the setup where we are scanning, um, we're scanning these very thin branches against this beautiful 
Darwin dry season blue sky and the blue signal from this just overrides everything else so there's a little bit of confusion and the scanner is mapping the blue of the sky to these branches be this blue tinge to the branches over here okay um coming back down we were on step 11 step 12 13 um since the TLS is recording distance to objects in X, Y, and Z coordinates, we can also visualize the cloud in terms of elevation. So what I want you to do now is head back to that one-to-one -one view and the view from the top. And you'll see over here that we are colored by, by RGB. But what we can also do is choose from edit. We can go to colors, um, height ramp, just choose a default height ramp and say OK. And now you'll see instead of points being colored by RGB, they are colored by their elevation. Remember also that everything here is relative to the scanner itself. We aren't working in geographic coordinates. Uh, there's no GPS in the scanner. So every point is relative to where the scanner is. Um, what the scanner is actually measuring is, is time, how long it takes for a pulse to return to the scanner. From that and the angle, it calculates the x, y, and z coordinates of each point. So the color scale here, uh, blue is lower, green is higher. So we have that elevation range. Okay, so those points that we've been talking about are under point 15, 14, how to choose your color ramp. You, um, you could, of course, choose default options. So we, we use the default option. You could choose a custom option where you can then set your own starting color and then your, your max color. You could also choose for, for banding, whereby you would color points within a, a certain elevation range differently on alternating over a repeated interval. Um, just one thing to note, as you zoom in here, obviously it's great working with 3D data, but as you'll see here, it's not really jumping out at us. Something that is really good at making it pop out a bit better is firstly to increase your point size as you hover up in the top um, left hand corner over here you can increase your default point size you can also do that over here point size but to really give your your image a more textured look head over to the display menu come down to shaders and filters and turn on the EDL shader and this is really great for giving more texture to the to the points you can really see the shape more clearly in the 3D view. Um, that's all I wanted to, to show you today. Uh, play around a bit, open up the other clouds, experiment, learn to navigate through the 3D data. And then I'll see you next week when we will learn how to merge multiple scans together uh, to make a more comprehensive 3D rendering. So thanks very much and see you next week.